hello, Wild Chuck Snow Wolf here with our fourth episode of Wild Explaining the Furry Fandom. And in this episode, we are going to talk about art in the sense of what it is to be an artist and where to start. For this episode, I'm going to use my own drawings as visuals because it's totally a perfect reason for me to start drawing again. <laughs> oh, I need to draw more. There are a lot of things to consider when it comes to striving to be an artist in a fan base. We'll cover bare basics that are important for you to remember so you're not so hard on yourself and you won't drown in pressure and, criti and criticism. First off, develop your own drawing style. This is important because having your own flavor of art style is what makes you shine in the world known of, of no names. There are artists out there who put a lot of detail and visual candy in, to establish their names like Blotch. Blotch is a big name artist in, in the furry world. You don't have to compete against big names. Um, it shouldn't even be your priority anyway. Also, don't let anyone put your work down because they like one artist better than opening their minds to uniqueness. I mean, that's like telling you your awesome holy grilled cheese sandwiches suck because it's not the world's best hot dog. They're not supposed to be the same. This is especially important for you to never ask for constructive criticism on how you draw. Ask for constructive criticism on a story you wrote for this comic you're working on instead. It only works on something that can use improvements. And art style is perfect in its own way, and only you can tell yourself if it can be improved or it's, if it's just right the way it is. When you produce your own style and give it something nobody has ever enjoyed before, something they'll remember it for, you don't need awesome artistic skills to be a memorable artist. Second thing to think about, publishing. For those who just want to draw for the heck of it, let everyone else see. Post it on social media and furry websites under your name. Or just go on DeviantArt, I mean everyone uses that, right? Um, you do this because people might actually like your style. For those who want to profit off of art and take commissions, don't get too excited and throw price tags all over just yet. You gotta develop your identity and recognition first by drawing and submitting so many things. Then you can start with modest prices to get experience under your wing. The last and very important thing to cover is the draw. Draw, 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 and draw, and then draw, and then draw, and then finally draw. And then when you're finally draw done, you draw. Even if one drawing did so well, don't let it be history with your name. Make it part of a massive gallery in your work. If you draw more, drawing will get easier for you. If drawing is easier for you, it'll feel like less work for you. The next thing you'll know is that your art will just pile up and you'll be on par with big name artists and you'll have your own style to turn to. Get all those hot dog lovers to try grilled cheese for once. So I bet you good luck out there. If drawing and art isn't your thing, then don't worry, because in the next bunch of episodes we'll cover other things that you might find yourself willing to try. Next episode we will cover on being a fur photographer. Tee hee. We'll teach you things that you should look out for and things you should be mindful of and yada yada yada. It'll be fun, as usual, right? I'm fun, right? Am I?
I don't know about you, but I like using pencil and paper. I mean, a lot of artists use drawing tablets. I'm not really crazy about drawing tablets. It's so weird. I mean, you're like, your drawing tablet is like on your lap. And then like, you're, you're using this weird pen. You're not making any strokes or whatever on it. And like, you're just looking at a screen just doing this. It just doesn't feel natural to me. It's so weird. I mean, like, what the heck? When, when I want, when I take a pen, and when I draw on a canvas or something, I want to see a drop. I want to see a stroke come out of it. Crying out loud! What the heck? Ugh, drawing tablets are so weird. Though it's a skill I should acquire. I draw quite a bunch of things. But I should draw some more. Drawing is nice. I like drawing. I'll see you next week. And, um, as usual, be safe and be happy and, like, wait, I haven't said that on the other episodes. Bleh. Anyway, bye. Bye. Um, eh. You know, a finished clean line, I would go back in and erase any lines that were showing through. Uh, someone's asking, how did I learn to draw like that? So it's just lots of practice. It's, um, I, I um, always looked at cartoons and storybooks and art books, and I, I tried to um, cop. Well, it wasn't so much copy, but like look at what was in the book and see if, if I could uh, do that. And then it was just lots and lots of practice. It's important to try and not get frustrated as you're as you're doing it, because it's not always easy. So we're gonna draw a little stupid ear, because we're drawing a stupid dog. And as we're drawing a stupid dog, I'm gonna um Oh dang it. I didn't mean to do that. Hold on, hold on, I got it. I'm just gonna erase one hand. <laughs> okay, let's get the pencil again. Then we. <sighs> I got this. I got this. Okay. And and, and we'll give him a collar because collars. What's doggy like? Because he's a stupid dog. We'll give him a s stupid collar. Oh no, I butchered that. Oops. And then... And then we'll just, we'll just name him. St stupid... Dog. I didn't give him an arrow, so you know exactly who I'm talking about. And then we give him a watermark. And, and then we give this thing a watermark. There. Done. That's how you draw. That's, that's how you draw. Is that right? Yeah. He agrees. <laughs>